today I'm gonna be telling you guys 14 things that I wish that I knew before I went to the Philippines. The Philippines is one of the most beautiful places in the world. However, it's not as easy to navigate compared to other places like Thailand or Bali. Don't worry, I'm gonna tell you everything to make sure that you feel super prepared and excited for your trip to the Philippines. If you're new here, my name is Claire. I've been traveling the world now for about a year and a half and recently just spent three weeks in the Philippines. I originally wanted to go to the Philippines because I've just heard nothing but good things about this place. They have beautiful beaches, incredible coral reefs, and some of the underwater life there is super, super unique. Now that being said, I did not do a whole lot of research on the Philippines before I went there. Hence this video, things I wish I knew before I came to the Philippines. We're gonna start off with number one, which is to research the weather in certain areas of the Philippines that you're wanting to go to before you book any plane tickets. In Asia, there is the rainy season and the dry season. Usually it's more touristy in the dry season simply because you don't have to worry about there being rain every single day. Therefore, during the dry season, everything is a little bit more expensive and there are a lot more tourists. If the only time that you can make it work is during the rainy season, don't let that scare you too much. Usually the rainstorms that come through typically only last a couple couple hours so you would still have the rest of the day to do activities. Be sure to check the rainy season in a specific island that you're going to because it is not the same all across the Philippines. Some of the islands do differ. So number two is local transportation. Getting from place to place in whatever town you're in is very easy. If you're in a big city typically they will have big buses called jeepneys that act pretty much the same as normal city buses. You just hop on and pay and then they will take you on their route. There are also tricycles everywhere that can take you very easily from place to place. Also, if you are staying in the big cities like Cebu City or Manila, they do offer Grab as well. So that's all the local transportation. I'm gonna get into ferries, flights, and more buses later on. So number three is one of my favorites. It's just the people in the Philippines. They are all so nice, so thoughtful, and they are really willing to help you with whatever you need. Also, one thing that shocked me a lot actually is the amount of English that they speak there. Their English is like, Perfect. I didn't know this until I got there, but English is actually an official language of the Philippines. Number four is going to be not to spend too much time in the really big cities like Manila or Cebu City. There are so many beautiful islands here with white sand beaches, turquoise waters, palm trees everywhere. Basically everything that you think of when you think of the Philippines is all these smaller islands. Although it was great to go see Manila and Cebu City, spend most of your time on the smaller islands. Which then brings me to number five, which is island hopping. But before that, if you guys could go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel, that helps me out a lot and it only takes like two seconds. Many people don't know this, but there's actually like over 7,000 Philippine islands, which is part of what makes the Philippines so interesting and unique. However, I had to learn the hard way that it is not the easiest or the cheapest to get from island to island. If you're wanting to go island hopping, your two options are ferries or flights. Flights will obviously be quicker and more comfortable. However, the ferries will be much cheaper. If you're looking to go on a long journey from one end of the island to the other, when you're talking about like four or five hour bus ride, I would recommend going with a non-AC bus. Now I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. I get car sick quite often. I need to have a very strong airflow when I'm in buses. I did take a bus with AC the first time because the sound of a non-AC bus just sounded too scary. However, the airflow from the AC bus was really not much at all. The non-AC buses don't have any windows and so you're constantly getting a huge flow of air and the comfort of the seats between the non-AC buses and the AC buses are kind of the same. Now, when it comes to the cost of flights, if you're planning to island hop and wanting to use planes to go from island to island, I would recommend booking everything kind of far in advance. This was a lesson that we had to learn the hard way. We didn't know where we were wanting to go next and so we had nothing booked. And then when we did finally go on to try and start booking some flights, everything had like tripled in price. So island hopping may not be the best financially for backpackers who are just going from place to place, not really knowing where they're gonna go next. Moving right along, we are at number six, which kind of goes hand in hand, which is booking transportation. This can be a little difficult to plan in advance as well. We thought we were gonna be able to book all of our ferry tickets and our bus tickets in advance. However, that's not really the case. There are some that you can purchase online, but for the most part, you cannot. Also, the ferry schedules are kind of hit and miss. Some ferry companies only have service from one island to another on certain days of the week and certain times, but they don't really post it anywhere online. Therefore, you kind of have to wait until you get there and actually go to the port to check out their schedule. With the buses, you kind of just have to turn up to the bus station and hope that there's a bus going to your destination soon. 
As you can imagine, that does cause a little bit of stress, especially if you've already booked your accommodation in that next place, but then you don't have any way to get there. So that is a huge point in the planes column. You can plan out your entire vacation before and then just relax. And now we're gonna go into number seven, which is accommodations. Now this one also surprised me a little bit when I got there because I had just come from Thailand where the accommodation is very cheap, so I was used to that. The accommodation in the Philippines is quite a bit more expensive than other places around Asia, I found. We ended up getting budget hotels the entire time just to try and save a little bit of money. Red Doors is where we stayed at. It was extremely, extremely basic. But I guess when you're in a place like the Philippines where you're gonna wanna be outside exploring most of the day anyway, that might not be a big deal for many people. Okay, now my favorite one is number eight, which is all the tours and activities that you can do in the Philippines. The Philippines has amazing things to do on land and also incredible things to see under the water. Being a scuba instructor, I was super obsessed with the underwater life. The Philippines is known for having a lot of unique sea creatures. For instance, the thresher sharks. You can go diving with these sharks every single day on the island of Malapasqua, and it is an incredible experience and the corals there are some of the most beautiful I've ever seen. Take my advice, go scuba diving. Wherever you are, it's going to be amazing. But I highly recommend going to the Tabataha Reef. This is an unreal diving location off of Palawan. Unfortunately, I did not get to experience it because the plane tickets from Cebu to Palawan became incredibly expensive, so I couldn't make it there this time. But it is top of my bucket list of what to do next time in the Philippines. And that leads me to number nine, which is to avoid the whale sharks in Oslob. You've probably heard that the best place to swim with whale sharks is in a town called Oslob on the island of Cebu. And it is 100% guaranteed that you will see a whale shark. However, it's because they are feeding the whale sharks. Whale sharks are supposed to be migrating all through the waters of Asia. Now that they're feeding them in Oslob, it's disrupting their entire cycle. If you do prefer to see whale sharks in a more natural environment, I would recommend either going to Donsol or Sogod Bay. They don't feed them there. You basically go out and you find them in their natural habitat. And number 10, this one's kind of an interesting one that I didn't know about until I actually left, but it is that service water in restaurants is mandatory, meaning you can ask for a glass of water and they will bring it to you free of charge. Luckily, I always carry my water bottle with me, so I was always asking them just if they had glasses of water that I could have instead of bottles of water. So that helps save on plastic. Just know that you do not have to purchase bottles of water at restaurants. Number 11, we're gonna talk about renting a scooter. In my opinion, a scooter is the way to go. It's the cheapest and the easiest way to get all around the island to make sure you see everything that you want to. Make sure that you're actually comfortable with riding a scooter before you go out onto the roads because that can be dangerous. Make sure to always wear a helmet. So number 12 is safety. Overall, because the people are so kind there, I did feel safe pretty much the entire time. I was a little bit on edge when we first got there because we were just attracting a lot of attention. We were staying in an area where there wasn't a whole lot of tourists, so we kind of stuck out like a sore thumb, but I am someone who is hyper aware of other people looking at me, and so I was feeling a little uneasy at times, but I don't think it was malicious at all. I think people were just wanting to come talk to us. I don't know. Number 13 is the Wi-Fi in the Philippines. So unfortunately, my experience with the Wi-Fi from all the islands that we stayed on was that it was quite unreliable actually. What I noticed is that when I checked into a hotel, usually the Wi-Fi was really good for the first day and then it's almost like it ran out of Wi-Fi and needed to be reloaded. Uh, and I did have to ask a few times for them to reload it. After they did reload it, it seemed to work just fine. So keep that in mind with the Wi-Fi. If it's not working and saying you have no connection, it's probably just because their Wi-Fi needs to be reloaded. And I included this tip mostly just for other digital nomads who are wanting to go there to upload content is that you will run into that issue. If you're just going on a relaxing holiday, this is one of the best places to kind of unplug and not use the phone at all. And the last one, number 14, is where to go. So first I'll tell you all where we went and then I will tell you where we wanted to go but didn't get a chance to. So first we flew to the island of Cebu. The next day we headed to the island of Bohol, which I highly recommend. There was so much to do there. The diving we heard is incredible. They have amazing beaches. They also have tar seers and they also have the chocolate hills. So there's a lot of things to do on the island of Bohol. Then we went up to the island of Malapasqua. And again, this is where we went to go swim with the thresher sharks. This is kind of a diving island. There weren't a whole lot of people there who weren't there for diving. And the last island that we went to was Leyte. We went down to Southern Leyte to Sogod Bay, and that's where we went and swam with the whale sharks. 
I wish we had more time to spend in the northern part of Leyte because there seemed to be so much rainforest, waterfalls, things to see on land that we didn't get to. Now for the places that we wish we could have gone, but it was a little too expensive for us to swing it this time. If you can make it work, I would recommend going over to the island of Palawan. You can fly into Puerto Princesa while you're there. You can go on a live aboard to that reef that I mentioned earlier, the Tubataha Reef. And then after that, you can make your way up to El Nido. Spend some time in El Nido, and then you can make your way on a ferry over to the island of Coron. I am not kidding you when I say we heard from every single person that those were the three places that we needed to go see. And that's it. That's the 14 things that I wish that I would have known before I went to the Philippines. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you would please subscribe to my channel. It helps me to keep me traveling so that I can provide more information like this to you guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.